Humans were migrating out of Africa in several waves and in several different time periods. There are two major routes of migrations out of Africa, the southern route and the northern route. The southern route takes us to Saudi Arabia. Scientists have discovered footprints of humans in Saudi Arabia that date back longer than 100,000 years ago. And there have been tools that discovered in emirates dating back to 85,000 years ago. And very likely some even went further and they reached India. Tools in India have been discovered dating back to 75,000 years ago. However, these populations most likely died out because we don't share any genes with any of them. On the northern route, at the intersection of Africa and Middle East, there is an area called the Levant and it covers Israel, Palestine, Jordan and many fossils have been discovered in this area dating back to 180,000 years ago, 120,000 years ago and 90,000 years ago. But again, these populations died out as well. Another interesting migration happened very long time ago. 220,000 years ago, a wave of Homo sapiens reached Greece. And these ones died out as well. Also, human bones have been discovered in China dating back to 110 or 115,000 years ago. We don't know which path they belong to, the southern path or the northern path. But these guys also died out, probably due to the bottleneck effect or the environmental conditions. Only one wave of migration survived and gave birth to all of us, the one that happened about 70,000 years ago. Africa was the birthplace of the Homo sapiens. That means Africa always had the highest level of genetic diversity in their populations. Now a few hundred people left Africa and those few hundred people gave rise to the rest of the world's population. That means everyone sitting on this side of the map has descended from those few hundred people. And that means that this side of the map has a lower genetic diversity compared to Africa. Africa has a higher genetic diversity in their Homo sapien populations. Let me show you what I mean exactly. Imagine this is Africa and each circle is an individual in Africa. And then some people begin leaving Africa. And here we have a first generation outside of Africa. And then these people begin mating. We are at the fourth generation and I have named these individuals A, B, C and D. Individual A has a mother and a father. The father also has another daughter, which is the individual B. That means that A and B are half brothers and sisters. But now look what's happening. Individual A's mother has a grandpa, this person right here. And the grandpa is also the great grandpa of individual B. That means that individual A and B are not only half brothers and sisters, they are also second cousins. So individual A and C if we go two generations up, we see that they have the same grandfather. That means A and C are first cousins. So what's happening here is that as we go down generation by generation, people are becoming more and more related to each other. That means their genetic makeup is getting more and more similar. Very soon, this population will be experiencing some serious issues. For example, if one of these individuals has a genetic mutation, a bad mutation, that bad gene will be spreading across the population in the following generations because everyone is related to everyone else. 
Secondly, this population is vulnerable to all kinds of diseases and epidemics, and a disease can easily wipe out the whole population. Only one wave of migration survived and gave birth to all of us, the one that happened about 70,000 years ago. And you may be wondering how did those humans overcome the bottleneck effect and the environmental conditions. Well, their initial population that left Africa may have been higher than the rest, and that kind of increases the genetic diversity. Also, these people may have been smarter and they were making better tools, more advanced tools, and probably using their brains to overcome the environmental conditions and the bottleneck. Population genetics has revealed that Europeans today have about 3% Neanderthal gene in their genome. And the Southeast Asians have about 4 to 6 percent Denisovan genes in their gene pool. By mating with the Neanderthals and the Denisovans, human beings increased the genetic diversity because the genes of these two species entered the gene pool of the Homo sapiens. And most likely, this benefited everyone. 